any art form that you do, it just takes a long time. Whether you're picking up a guitar or a, a, a piano or a paintbrush, you have to spend time doing it. I do the stuff so much that I don't really know what my style is. It's just how I, I want to look at stuff. That's how I shoot too. It's like, how, how do I want to see this? How do I want it to look? Or how, how do I want to look at this? And if you think like that, it becomes self-apparent. And I think that's the same with anything. Like if you're painting or if you're playing music, like what do you want to, what sounds do you want to make? What colors do you want to use? It, it's, that's, that's where your style comes from. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm really excited about this conversation with John Hebert. He's been one of my favorite professional photographers that I've looked up to for a really long time. And there's so much value that I believe he adds within this conversation. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so sure. I'm sitting down with John, as he's known on Instagram, John Ryan. Do you want to introduce yourself, John, and uh, tell people a little bit more about yourself and what it is that you do? Yeah, man. Well, thanks for having me. This is, this is fun. Um, my name is John. I'm a guy that lives in Los Angeles, California, USA, and I take pictures for a living, um, both for fun and for advertising, um, commercial stuff, editorial, uh, lots of different stuff. So um, yeah, I'm excited to dive in and talk a little bit about that. I will caveat this. I'm very bad at talking about myself and what I do. So hopefully you guys can just bear with me. But yeah, I'm excited to dive into this with with you. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm uh, really excited to to hear about, you know, what what it is that you do, because I know that, you know, you have so much value and there's a lot of people that look up to you for the work that you do. And so I think oh, thanks, that man. this chat is just going to really benefit a lot of people um, just to give them good direction on where they should go and what they should be doing within their career. Uh, just based yeah. off of what you do. So there's uh, a lot yeah. of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make this. Don't easy. listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Maybe we can, maybe we can help you guys. Cause I've definitely, uh, it's been a journey. So if maybe I can impart some of the wisdom, maybe that I have, I don't know. <laughs> we'll try. Yeah. As photography is, it's, it's a whole journey. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. how many, how many years have you been doing photography? You know, it's kind of like a gray area. I, it's not like I just picked up a camera one day and was like, I'm going to do photography now. I've been around cameras and photography for a long time. I grew up skateboarding when I was a kid in Detroit, Michigan. And so ever since I was a little kid, I, I, I had uh, subscriptions to all the skateboard magazines like Thrasher, uh, Skateboarder, uh, trans, like Transworld. And so I was always pouring over images of skateboarding. And um, so photography has always been part of my life. And some of that stuff is really interesting. And, and a, a lot of the guys from those magazines have gone on to do really great commercial work, like Mike Blayback and uh, Gabe Morford and who else, like Fred Mortain, like these really awesome photographers that are still doing great work today. But that's how I got interested in photography was just uh, being obsessed with skateboarding as a kid. And as my friends and I got into that. We were documenting ourselves doing that with cameras and kind of figuring out how film cameras work. And it was all just for fun. But that's how I got into it. I never really shot skateboarding, but I was just always around cameras and the concept of shooting things and uh, making stuff ever since I was a kid. So fast forward later in life i actually did pick up a 35 millimeter camera when was that was probably in like high school and i just shot photos of my friends and it was kind of it was really just a toy for me and so i started learning with that and i just really enjoyed the process of figuring out how the camera worked and taking the stuff in to get it developed and then eventually that got too expensive shooting film all the time so i switched to digital and uh so that's kind of that's how my journey into this happened it was gradual and it sort of just took over my life <laughs> slowly but I, I really enjoy it now that's awesome yeah that's such a cool beginning it, it's uh it's really interesting because there's some form that that gets people into photography and yeah. I always thought the skateboarding realm of of like the skater kid kind of vibe was just always really cool. I, I always wanted to be that when I was growing up and <laughs> and uh, I just never was able to get into that. But that is so cool that you and your friends yeah. were able to do that. It was a uh, it was cool because it was uh, a lot of creativity. Like it wasn't just the skating. Like there was so much that went with it that I got involved with 
through that, like skating, video, videography a little bit, music. It was just a catalyst for a lot of creativity when I was a kid. So it just started, made my the gears in my brain turn like that when I was young. So that's how, how that started, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah. So like, what was the process of why you jumped up past a film camera? Like what got you into more of like, at that time, would it be DSLR? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got, I got like a little Canon. I think it was like a rebel, like just very big. I found it on Craigslist or something like that, or maybe at a pawn shop. It was mostly just convenience. I just, uh, I started bringing the 35 millimeter camera with me like everywhere. And I was always taking pictures and it would just got to be expensive to take the film in all the time. And I felt limited with 24 exposures per film roll. And then you had to take it out and put the new one. It, it just got crazy. So I was like, why don't I just get a digital camera and then I can just shoot everything. That's what drove that. It really wasn't like I wanted to get into digital photography. I just wanted to shoot more. And that allowed me to just shoot more and not have to worry about it so much. But I'm glad that I started with film because it forces you to slow down a little bit and think. So even when I switched to digital, it wasn't like I was just blasting thousands of photographs everywhere. I still shot the same way, but I just didn't have to pay as much money. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so true. It's so easy to shoot like a bazillion photos in like oh, one yeah. day and you're just like, oh, you yeah, can just okay. hold a thing down and just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like every camera now has like ridiculous shutter speed and it just like, just oh, yeah. Shutter count is just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They go forever. So, yeah, yeah you got to be careful with that, though. Yeah. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it can make it can shut your brain off <laughs> if you're not oh, careful. No kidding. I know just the intentionality around your photos just kind of loses its mm, like, you know, just. Yeah. You know, yeah. How you, yeah. How you picture a, an image and right. how it should look, you know, it, as you said, like, you know, I, I love how you said that, how the, the film helped you to slow down. And I think that's something that maybe the newer photographers might be missing, right? Is is the being in the moment and like framing up your photo the way it should be framed or intentionally thinking about exactly what you want in that frame and how it should look, yeah. right? Right. So, yeah, because you only have 24 of these, so you got to make it count. Mm -hmm. I, I'd, I'd suggest to people to, to start with the film just because it, it trains your brain to think like that. And I think that can come in handy. Yeah, exactly. Whether, 100%. Yeah. 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 So, so do you feel that that played into your style as a photographer and, and how you progress to where you are today is slowing everything down or yeah. Cause I know that you love to do a lot of fast motion things, but did that uh -huh. still kind of play into? Oh, totally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I, uh, when I show up to work or when I show up and, uh, I'm going to sh shoot something. A lot of times I like, I just put the camera down. I, I don't even have it on me. And I, I just walk around and I just feel the, the, the scene and just see where I'm at and maybe go look at something from over here or see, like, just try to get your head in the space where you, you know where you are and, and, and you know, you start coming up with ideas before you even have the camera out. So, um, and that's what I used to do when I had a film camera, like it's cause you have to think about it. So that's definitely really influence my process at least is just not worrying about shooting right away and just I'll just walk around for a little bit when I first show up and just get a feel for everything so yeah um, but yeah <laughs> yeah that's really cool because I you know it's so funny I I find with myself oftentimes I'll get into a location and I'm like okay this would be cool this would be cool this would be cool let's just let's just go do it and, you know you kind of just want yeah. to blitz but slowing yeah. that down it's exciting Especially oh, when, is, when you got yeah. cool fast stuff, it's just like you're just like, oh my god, this is crazy. But you just gotta like <laughs> slow down and just yeah. think for a second. And yeah, yeah, it's it's always worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, how would you describe your style of photography to people that may not know you or or be familiar to your work or they're just coming into your work? How would you describe your style? That's such a good question. It's a huge question. It is. <laughs> I I would say I would say my style is I love environments. I love how something fits into a place. That's usually where I start when I get inspired with shooting. So I, I, I start kind of like a thousand feet up and, and yeah, I just like to see an environment and how something inter interacts with that. And then I, I drill in and I go a little bit closer and get a little bit more intimate with like what I'm actually shooting. So that's kind of how I approach it. And maybe if you look at my stuff, you might get that feeling 
but yeah, my my style, like I, I like to just see like the whole place. That's like when I get excited is when there's a an a scene or an environment that just has a lot of stuff visually to offer or nothing at all. Like if it's just a very clean, like empty place with a lot of negative space, like that's cool too. But yeah, I just like big open spaces. It's like my favorite thing. That's great. And what lenses are you using to to capture that? Because I know that you you shoot a lot of wide, but you also shoot a lot of close up. I've noticed within uh-huh. your work. So like what what lenses are you using to to better tell that story that that you continuously go back to? Yeah, that's a good question too. My my go to lens is thirty five millimeter, and I've found that that is wide enough to open up the scene and make it feel like it, it lets a environment breathe a little bit, but it's also not wide enough to distort things. It's like at the very threshold where things start getting stretched without it looking weird. So I, I love 35 millimeter for that. So I use that. And then I also will go to like 70 to 200 in that range for more of the close up stuff. But if I'm in a place that like, if I'm in the mountains somewhere, it's so fun to compress a mountain range with a, with a telephoto, like that can actually add a lot of depth and drama to a, a picture, I think. So it kind of depends on where I'm at, but a lot, a lot of my stuff is with 35 millimeter. That's kind of my, my, my go-to focal length. Yeah, that's awesome. So when people go to your Instagram or they go to your website, they're going to notice a lot of cars, a lot of motorcycles, and a lot of dirt bikes. What got yeah. you interested in shooting those things? Because you had talked about growing up as the skater kid and and shooting a lot of that, but what kind of transitioned you into shooting these types of things? Yeah, it was natural. When I got into motorcycles, there was something about riding bikes that just made me want to go look at stuff. Like I'd, I'd just get up in the morning and and go to the desert and find some little town or, or uh, I, the, the motorcycle just made me do things that I, I wouldn't do in a car. Like I probably wouldn't get up at five in the morning and go drive somewhere, but I'll get on my bike and I'll go check something out. And because I was in these places that were interesting, of course, I had my camera with me and I was taking photographs and so that actually enhanced the experience for me was shooting photos of where I was so it was kind of like I wasn't really sure if I was going for a ride and bringing my camera or if I was taking my camera on a ride like it was like uh it went hand in hand it was definitely like yeah just going for rides on my bike really inspired me to, to shoot more and that's was really the catalyst for how I got started doing this professionally is that some brands started taking note of what I was doing and yeah it kind of started from there so to transition to that, I still work heavily in those industries because that's really what inspired my f- photography endeavors to begin with. So yeah, I, I work heavily with that with that stuff. I just I think it's they're interesting. I don't know. I just yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so interesting, and I mean it's it's really cool how you're able to to bring the the two things beautifully together the the photography as well as as being out motorcycling I, I love how you worded that how you know you didn't know if you were going out for a motorcycle ride and just bringing the camera or going out to take photos and and riding the motorcycle you know it's just so yeah like, it's seamless. the same thing to me hmm. yeah. yeah yeah I I love that I I think that's honestly where passion kind of just is like at its climax just just when when you can combine the two things and, and make them into something that you surround your life with. And I think that's ultimately where you create success is when you're passionate about something so much that, you know, you're willing to to give everything to it because you just love it that much. And it's just so cool how your work surrounds that. And like, ultimately you built a career out of that lifestyle because you're so passionate about it. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. If, if you get up at five in the morning to go do something, I think that's like peak joy. <laughs> you know, you're like doing something that you like to do. If, you're doing it just for fun. So, and sometimes I don't, I, I forget that I'm, I'm working like when I'm on the job. Cause I, it's just like, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. There's that too. That's the other plus side. <laughs> Do you feel cause like you're so passionate about it. Does that ever take away your jitters on the job? Like to, Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Because it's, I'm so used to just thinking like that because uh, that's, how, that's what I a lot of the time what I do for fun anyway. So it's just, it's just uh, like, I just go right into that mindset as soon as I'm on the job. So it, it feels easy, but a lot of the time we're, we're working. Uh, it's not always just like shooting, whatever we'll probably get into that, but it, there's also uh, like a lot of times we're shooting clothes and we have like a, like a mood board and we have a shot list and we have all this stuff. So, but it just makes it easier when, when your brain is, 
always in that mindset to just work with those different things and, and, and get stuff done and make it fun too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree. So when, when people look at your page, they would say, okay, this guy has a really specific style. Um, in my opinion, I would, I would say it's a very commercial looking style and it's so masterfully crafted. Uh, that's how oh, I would, <laughs> how I would see it as. And how did you go about building out your personal style? Because I know that I've talked to a lot of younger up, up and coming photographers and they're trying to figure out how to build out their style or, or what direction to take, um, whether that's super oversaturated images or, uh, very undersaturated images or super high contrast, just different things that would describe them. But how did you ultimately come about finding your personal style? That's a good question too. And I think with anything, any art form that you do, it just takes a long time, whether you're picking up a guitar or a a, p a piano or a paintbrush you you just you have to spend time doing it for me it's funny because i don't i do this stuff so much that i don't really know what my style is because it's just i just let it's just how i, I want to look at stuff or it's just how i uh want to see things is that's what guides my style it's not really uh i'm not thinking like oh i want to make this look like this or i it, it's just uh i just know when i see it and I, I just, that's how I shoot too. It's like, how, how do I want to see this? How do I want it to look? Or how, how do I want to look at this? And if you think like that, it becomes self-apparent. And I think that's the same with anything. Like if you're painting or if you're playing music, like what do you want to, what sounds do you want to make? What colors do you want to use? It, it's, that's, that's where your style comes from. Yeah, so I, I just don't worry about it so much. Just look at things and, and try to figure out what, how you like to look at it and how does it look good to you? And over time, you'll just start to develop a look and feel that that's your own. If you're not worrying about copying other stuff, and of course, like you want to be inspired by other people and that, that helps you get started. But at a certain point, you you take off and you stop looking at other stuff and you develop just an innate, innate sense to, to know what looks good to you. So just keep doing it, honestly. Like that's, if you're wondering what your style is going to be, try different things. Like you might surprise yourself, like try to oversaturate it, try to bring up greens or try to bring down the greens or just try different things until you see something that just clicks in your brain. And that's, that's kind of what I did over time. Cause I, I spent a lot of time too, not really knowing what my style was, but eventually you just stop caring and you just make things that looks good to you. Or if you're making music sounds good to you or all, et cetera. <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's my advice. It's just, just do it a lot and be able to self critique too. be able to like back away and look at it from a, objective standpoint and that that's another important thing is to be able to self-critique not so much that you discourage yourself but um if you can pick out things you're like oh next time i wish i did that better or if i if this color was a little bit different that goes a long way yeah just listen to your inner voice your 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 brain will tell you sometimes that's the skill is just learning how to listen to your brain i think mm -hmm. takes mm -hmm. time 100 percent. that I makes think, sense yeah that was that was really good advice and i think it's as you said, just putting in the reps, because you yeah. know, if, you, if you don't put in the reps, you, you'll never, you know, you'll never get past day one, day two, yeah, month, right. month one, month two, you know, like you just become so discouraged, but it's, it's realizing that, you know, you start at a certain place, but you know, you will progressively increase and just kind of find your voice as, as time goes on. But, you know, it's just, it's just realizing that from the start, yeah, you, you'll, you'll suck. But it's like, you, yeah, you, exactly. You yeah. Better. And, and, and embrace that. Uh, that's another thing that I was talking to somebody about this a while back is that everybody that's ever been good at something, they were so bad at some point, but they just kept doing it. Like your favorite musician or your favorite artist or your favorite basketball player, or like they were all so bad when they started, just keep, and, but they just did it. So just keep doing it and keep going and, and don't worry about being bad or it sounds cliche to just put in the work, but that's the only way. So. Yeah, I heard uh, I heard a quote. Uh, I I believe it was from one of the recent podcasts I was listening to, and it says, "Embrace the suck. Just yeah, just embrace yeah. it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. you got all the time in the world to get to get good at something. Just yeah, just go one step at a time, and you'll you'll find it. It's it's in there. You just gotta keep digging through. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I think, I think that in itself is, you know, what just gives people kind of light at the end of the tunnel. Just you know, somebody yeah. at they would say your position, you know, it's like, 
look at look at how far I've come from from shooting skateboarders as you know in in uh high school and you know look where I am now it's it's like that that took years and years and years yeah and it's like you know what you, and you I'm just, still on a journey like I'm for sure. like in a like in five five years from now I probably look at back at the stuff that I'm doing now and being like oh my god this is awful <laughs> but it's like we're we're all just always on a journey like so it, it never stops so just keep going mm, I it's like fun, that. it's fun yeah, yeah, just enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want it to become too much work. You you want to enjoy it along the process. Yeah, yeah. Just have just have fun with it and you'll you'll, you'll get good. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So let's transition into how you started to land larger clients. Uh this was one of the questions that I got asked on Instagram was mm-hmm. how did you progressively start landing larger clients? You know, and and actually I I would prefer it if you you know, we talk about some of the clients that you had worked with previously. I, I had just recently seen that you worked with Polar Pro. That's that's a big client to the photography community. And so I, I would just like you to expand a little bit on possibly some of the brands that you've worked with. Sure. And then, you know, how you went about landing those clients. Well, again, it, it's just like a it's a journey. So I was a hobbyist photographer that I wouldn't have even called myself a photographer. I I just like to take pictures. And how I got started in this was I started just sharing stuff that I was working on and just things I was doing for fun. And a company reached out to me out of the blue and they were like, hey, do you, what's, do you do photo? Like, what's your day rate? And I, I was just like, yeah, like I totally, I can work with you guys. And um, so they were my first client. And uh, so I did that. And then another company saw that I'd, did that and so they hit me up so it's just like it sort of just snowballs so if you just can work with somebody sometimes that's enough to just help you get your feet off the ground and at least get your name out there but at the time it, it, i wasn't trying to become a photographer really uh this was just kind of something i was doing on the side and yeah it was just it just was the snowball effect and every time i did a job i just tried as hard as i could like i so I think people saw that and maybe it was like a little bit of word of mouth too that just helped me get my name out as well. Yeah, like just try as hard as you can. Even if you get a small client, like just do the best work that you can because you never know who knows somebody and who might vouch for you for something else. And that's how I got started. But as far as the the clients I've worked with, like I've done a lot of stuff with like Triumph Motorcycles, Ducati. I've worked with Harley Davidson, Indian. I've done car stuff for uh, like Maserati and Toyota and then like Polar done stuff with Polar Pro and clothing brands like Iron and Resin and At Wild and um, done some stuff with with Bell Staff. So there's like a lot of stuff that I've done, but it's really just, it's all been such a gradual thing that it's, you, you just have to keep going really and just do the best work that you possibly can. And, and some, someone will notice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I, th- I think that end part is very valuable to, to realize and recognize is that, you know, it, you, you need to, just keep continuing because as you said it is a snowball effect it's like one person sees and then then it seems like everybody else starts to to know and figure out oh okay this is the guy i want to go to or this is the guy that i can trust because you know you have a good reputation whatnot but it's just that snowball effect you you had said that the, the first person was asking you what your day rate was how did they find you was that through instagram or was that through through... instagram okay yeah Okay. Yeah, social media. Social media is crazy. Uh, yeah, they they just hit me up out of the blue on Instagram. That's amazing. Simple as that. So did yeah. have you, you just found never know. A, exactly, exactly. Have you found a lot of your connections have come through social media? Oh yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Um, it's I think social media is a really powerful tool if if you use it right. If you use it socially like it's intended, it's it's crazy. It's really like all my clients are on there, you know, it, it's fun to see like what they're up to. And um, it just gives you a, a, an ability to, to interact with people and not just clients, but other creatives and gives you a chance to see like, like I've, I've worked with video, like DPs that I've seen their work on Instagram and have hit them up like, Hey, I have this project. Do you want to come work with me on it? And vice versa. Like people have seen my stuff and been like, Hey, we're, we're working on this project. We need stills. So you want to hop in? And yeah, it's just, it's a great place. If you use it socially, it can be very valuable. So yeah, I definitely recommend using social media. It helped my career and it's, it still does. Mm. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. And I like, I like how you said that, you know, just using it socially. I, I didn't really realize how much benefit there could be when you started to 
reach out to people and just sending them messages about, you know, your work is awesome or you're doing great at this or uh, I really appreciated that. And and it's yeah, it's just being engaging and and it's not so much about you or what you're doing because it's like you know sometimes we can get so focused on you know how are we doing or or how do people perceive us but it's like no just yeah just benefit other people by by what you have to to say and how you can encourage them yeah it's like a big party it's like it's, it is. it's like social social media it's like this place where everyone's hanging out and they're making stuff and sharing it it's uh that's that's how i think it's like walking into a room with like all these people that are making things and it I think some people think of it as uh, it's very like inner focus. Like they're like, like my social media, it's not really about me so much. It's like, I try to share the things I'm working on with other people. So it's, it's very like, and I'm always talking to pe- people are always talking to me from other parts of the world. It's just a very, it's very powerful. If you, if you think of it that way and not just a place for you to be like, Oh, look at, look at me or look what I'm doing. But if, if you, if you think of it like a party or like this room where you can just meet people that are doing stuff, it's, that it's it's hard to meet them otherwise because then you, you got to pour through websites and I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> like, how do you, it's like kind of the, it's just so easy. Yeah. So I yeah. think yeah. the social media landscape is changing dramatically, but I think that that concept of it just being a place where people are sharing stuff and you can find people that uh, have similar interests that that's, that stays, whether it's whatever, whatever platform it is. Yeah, I would definitely recommend just using social media in that way and making it a conversation rather than just like a an advertisement for yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like I'm, it, we literally live in the golden age because previously they would have had to go to all these different events, all these yeah. different parties, and it's like to to meet these people that you're meeting up with. But it's like you can meet world class people on on Instagram that are down to earth, and yeah. it's like you can make those connections so easy now. It's like, this is crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is also, uh, it, it's easy, but it's also hard because there's so many people and there's, there's so much, uh, I don't want to say it's saturated, but, uh, there's a lot of, there's just like a lot of, it's like overwhelming almost. It's just like, there's so many people doing stuff, but it's still, it's still just in a pinch. If you need someone like I, I have like stylists or like uh, Digitex or producers like saved in my Instagram. And I'm like, if I need, if I have a job that comes up and I just need somebody, I just go through, I'm like, Oh, I wonder if she can help me like do styling for this or like, and we've, we've talked before. So it's, I don't know. I, I think it's so powerful. Not that you have to be on there all day, like scrolling and getting lost in the shuffle and looking at all these crazy reels and stuff, but just, I don't know, find, find your people that you can work with and just stay in touch with people. It's, it's not that hard. Mm-hmm. It's fun too. Makes, yeah. makes work more fun too if, if you like if you know people mm-hmm. and you're on the job and, and you know each other so yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent yeah i i like i i totally agree with everything you're saying there i think it's i think it's awesome for people that are trying to find their way within photography whether they're just starting out or whether they're growing the the big controversy over generalist versus specialist i would love to hear your thoughts on whether you believe it's important for a photographer to be general and and do a vast array of photography. Like, you know, one day they're doing weddings or one day they're doing family photos or the next day they're shooting motocross. Or do you believe Uh that they should specialize into one niche, one category? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. So I think this is a two-part answer. I think from a creative standpoint, you'd benefit from doing a bunch of stuff. For example, like I've, I've worked on with clients of, of in different industries where it made me like think differently and made me pull some of like those ideas into different, like into motorcycling. Or if I'm working on something for a travel agency and we're, and we're shooting this beautiful architecture, like sometimes that inspires me to pull that into cars or, or vice versa. I, I think you'd be well advised to creatively keep your brain fresh and and do different things but professionally i think it's the best bet to try to specialize in something i think it makes it easier for you and also makes it easier for work to find you because if you're just posting anything and everything like if you're posting like uh restaurant stuff and then the next picture is clothes and then the next picture is like i think it confuses people they don't they don't know like 
where you're coming from. For example, I, I do like a lot of different stuff that I, I just don't really even put on my portfolio or, or, or share. You can kind of steer the ship based off what, it, what you're sharing with people. So I think, it, I think it's better to specialize these days, especially if you can, whatever that is, whatever you're into. If you're super into basketball, like share a ton of basketball stuff because then the people that like are doing sporting events and things like that will see that and be like, oh, this guy gets it or this girl gets it. She understands basketball. And so it makes them more comfortable to reach out to you and, and ask you to shoot something because they, they can see that you understand where they're coming from. That's helped me with cars and, and motorcycles because I just do it so much that uh, I feel like I, I understand where that is coming from. So it's, it makes it easy for clients to trust me. I'll know how to tell that story. I hate, I, I, I hate when people say that, but <laughs> uh, I'm a storyteller. No, um, but you know what I mean? Like uh, you, you understand where, where that's coming from. Like I, it would be hard for me to go in and like, and shoot golf or something. Cause I, I'm not a golfer. There, there's things, there's things that you understand when you're around something all the time that you'd be able to document that I, I wouldn't maybe see, but also maybe having a different perspective would be good. I think for, for work specialized creatively do a bunch of stuff. Cause you just never know where you're going to find inspiration. So don't be afraid to branch out and get weird and play with lighting or shoot people or cars or whatever. So that's, that's my advice. Yeah. If I yeah, can I've... summarize. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, bring it's... it all down from the sky. <laughs> well, I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think, I think the, the best part of that summary would definitely be what you had said as well is having to shoot lots of things is really good, but just don't share that in your portfolio, right? And it's yeah. like, just be selective with what you share in your portfolio. It's not, it's not a bad yeah. thing to shoot other things. Just just be selective with your portfolio. Yeah, that's and, yeah. I think that's a good strategy. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, if if you are possibly hurting for money and you're like, well, you know, it's kind of that that feast or famine mindset. And it's like, well, I need to I need to do so many jobs this month or, or in the next month. And this is the only way I'm going to get found. Well, the, the power of word of mouth, if you do really good on a job that isn't connected to your portfolio, you, you'll still get hit up for the work if, if you yeah. know, your reputation is good. So, you know, it's, it's staying very firm on, on what you believe you're passionate about and, and what your specialty is, because that ultimately will help you in the long run, but you, you right. can't, you can't think short term because if you think short term, you're just going to ruin opportunity for your future basically. Yeah, so. I think, I think so. Yeah. But just find what you're, what you like and just do that. If, yeah. if you like something, it makes it really fun to go to work. Like I love, I love cars and motorcycles. It's like when I go to work, it's, I have a blast. Like, so <laughs> if you're really passionate about something, it can be anything like just find, just find what you like and yeah, do, do that. I think it just makes work more fun for you. Yeah, definitely. So let's speak to the person that is possibly just starting out or starting into their niche what is one of the most important things to be focusing on when your site's focused on i'm going to be a photographer and i want to grow and and okay the the niche and the specialty is for me what are the best things to be focusing on in order to to begin to to move forward and and establish yourself as a photographer Definitely connections, people, just meet, meet people. I think that's one of the, I mean, that's where almost all of my opportunities have come from just meeting, meeting people and also just observe if, if you're interested in a certain niche, observe that and understand as much as you can about it. And that, that'll help your photography in it as well, or videography or whatever you're doing. But I would say the number one thing is just meeting people. If, if you're interested in like outdoor stuff and you want to shoot adventure, if you want to be in the mountains, like shooting backpacking, go to, go to those outdoor festivals, you know, or those, uh, not festivals. They're like, uh, you know, those like shows where they have, what's the big one that they have. That's like, uh, the outdoors products where they show all the new, like REI is there. And like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh anyways, go, yeah. to, go to those events, like go find, <laughs> yeah. find out where the industry, like an industry show or, and just meet people and talk to them and, and show them what you can do. Cause you just never know who's looking for something, find out where those people are. And, or if you're into cars, just, go to a car meet and see who's there, you know, like go meet somebody. Maybe you can go shoot something. And then I don't know. It, it all just starts with people. Like no, no one can do this by themselves. You mm -hmm. can't become a photographer by yourself. 
Like uh, it takes people. So, and that's true with anything. No one's ever done anything alone. So people is the driving force behind anyone who's been successful at anything. Amen. So to start, that. start that, start there, start with people and, and just mm-hmm. do it a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Repetition, repetition. Yeah. 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 That's huge. So going back to social media as a photographer, do you feel threatened at all by the changing climate? of where things are going, where, you know, each platform is pushing video centric and there's a lot of upcoming photographers. They're like, this is not good for us. This is very bad for us, you know, and they're feeling the heat, but as an established photographer, what are your feelings on that? I think it's exciting. I think it's a, an exciting time for everything. I, I think it's really exciting for video. It's a, it's a time where like, obviously video is expanding like crazy but it's also exciting for photography too because i think now more than ever you you have to do stuff that's interesting like you can't you you can't survive on uh, mediocrity so it's really put people to the test on whether they are passionate about it even so i think this whole shift towards video has sort of uh it's kind of weeded a lot of people out that are on the fence what, what they wanted to do and if they were really into it but the people that are passionate about photography they're they're still there and there's still so much work to be done. Photography is never going away. <laughs> social media is obviously changing. People love to look at video on social media, but there's so much need for photography. Like there's always going to be a need for catalogs. There's always going to be a need for stuff online. Shopping, like online shopping has exploded. Yeah, there's there's always going to be a need for for stills. But mm-hmm. but it's also a chance too if, if you're a photographer and try video. Try see like figure it out because it's it's really important these days to whether you do it or not at least understand it almost every project i do has a video component i always hire someone for that just because it's a lot it's usually too much for us to get done with just one person it's it's really it's inspired me to sort of play around with video a little bit which i like which maybe i wouldn't have done otherwise if i didn't have this little thing in the back of my head that was telling me to start thinking about video so i, I think it's it's a good time for creativity in general and I think video has also inspired my photography too, because I just started thinking in terms of, of motion and it, it's fun to shoot photos, like thinking about video hmm. and shoot in a linear, like a, like a linear style. Yeah. I'd say don't be discouraged by the changes. Just keep doing it. Especially if you like it, just keep going. There's always, there's always going to be need for stills despite likes or shares you get on Instagram. Don't worry about that stuff. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> just do what you like to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah. I think you might've answered this in the, the the recent answer that you just gave, but how are you continuing to grow on your own personal social media? What are some of the things that you're implementing to, to continue to see growth? Well, I'm different because I, I actually, uh, I don't care about that as much. I'm not active. I'm not trying to grow my social media. I think that can be dangerous. It's important to establish connections. I think establishing connections with people that have similar interests to you is more important than like your follower account. So that's always been my strategy is just connecting with people that also do what I do and not really worrying about likes or all that stuff. Cause that can, you, if, if you're not careful that that can uh, negatively impact your a, your, how you view your own work. This actually always happens to me. If I post something <laughs> that I actually like thought was okay. And then it's always like the worst <laughs> performing one. <laughs> I think it's because I like like big photographs that just don't look good on social media. But um, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's like, so just like, don't worry about that stuff. Like, just like I said before, just think of social media, like a, like a, like a room that has people in it that are doing stuff that you can go meet. Like it, you don't, need everyone to follow you you should just connect with the people that the right people and so that that's that's all i think about it wouldn't matter if i had three followers or seven hundred thousand followers if if those three followers were like a dp that i love to work with a producer so yeah Mm -hmm. don't don't worry about it just keep making stuff and just focus on the work don't worry don't worry about social media so much i think i think that whole thing is kind of kind of dying anyways i feel like uh the people that are crushing it in commercial stuff like they all have like 300 followers like <laughs> so don't don't worry like it, it's not like your followers have nothing to do with getting work it's really just focus on on the work you yeah don't, don't worry about it so much so to answer your question i don't really actively try to grow my following i just post stuff that i like right and on if it grows that's cool if not it's all right hmm. 
Yeah, that's going to be a huge, like, I don't know, Hopefully upset help in some people's people, mind. Like, I, I think yeah, it's fantastic. It might help somebody, too, because there's a lot of, like, people that are doing really great stuff that maybe they need to hear that. A hundred percent. It can be it can be discouraging if you feel like your stuff's not getting seen or just don't worry about it. The right person, if, if the work is good, just make sure the work is good because if the right person stumbles on your on your work and it's awesome, that's gonna be great. Like 100%. they'll look they'll look through your stuff. Like the art directors at companies, they're gonna look through your stuff and you want them to be impressed. You don't want some random person in I would love to go to Indonesia, but uh, <laughs> just some random person in Indonesia. Yeah. So just, just focus on, on the work and don't, don't worry about that stuff. Unless you're a, a brand and you're selling stuff. Of course, it's great to have like a lot of followers because then it generates leads and whatnot. Quality over quantity, I would say. Mm, yeah. It's, very true. Yeah. Like no, almost I, anything. Exactly. I, I think, I think a lot of people needed to hear this. Um, some people are going to be like, well, that didn't answer my question, but it's like, you know what that yeah that's that's what you needed to hear because it's like so many people are getting so fired up about how instagram's changing or what platform do i need to be on to grow or to to be big yeah. and successful but it's like success doesn't come from followers that it, it, it has nothing to do with yeah. in relation with that you know what's happening so, though is that everyone that's concerned about follow and all that stuff they're they're all changing their stuff to like fit this algorithm but Oh, the dude, people yeah. that are the people that actually care about making stuff, they're they're just focused on making great things. And so they're the ones getting hired for stuff. Because yeah. it's like they're they're just they're on their path still. So just stay on your path. Don't don't worry, don't worry about it so much. A hundred percent. I think I think that was some fantastic advice that a lot of people need need to hear right now. So yeah. Yeah, that's great. So when looking at a platform like Instagram where it's very photo centric and it's very established and it's kind of, kind of kind of the place to go where you know you attach it to your website and whatnot do you feel that Instagram should be a place where where it's looked at as your portfolio as a photographer do you do you feel that it should be seen as an extension of your portfolio I think that's a great idea I think you can um I don't think there's a uh like a definite answer for that. I think your website is your your portfolio, right? Instagram is a great place for you to show people who you are, what you're about. I feel like you can you can breathe some personality into social media a little bit. And I think that's a good thing. But I, I definitely think social media, like your your social media should reflect your style, definitely. Like a like an art director, they're gonna go to your social media. Like that's where they go. So make make sure that your Instagram is the stuff that you want to art director to see and that's the the foot you want to put forward but don't be afraid to to show who you are too sometimes people's instagrams it can look too cold like who is this person like you, you kind of want to see like who they are and i have stuff that i have on my instagram that maybe i i don't have in on my website that's cool too because i can just show someone like some other stuff that you do yeah i think i think it's important to at least use it like somewhat like a portfolio but breathe a little bit of life into it it's kind of just how you want to go about it. But I, I think for, in my experience, that's been, that's helped me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's yeah. really good advice. Yeah. Going personally to you now, what are a few of the dream clients that you would like to see yourself working with in, Ooh. in the future? Dream clients. I think, you know, I don't know if I have any like dream clients because it's all like, I don't really get off on the the client. Like I, I rather, like, I think it'd be cool like to do a dream concept or something, regardless of who it's for. I'm trying to think of an example of that. Like maybe like shooting someone, like showing a side of someone, like if, if you shot like like Keith Richards at home or something, like, like <laughs> see like who, who Keith Richards is, like him making coffee or just like the, those little moments that aren't like these glamorous, huge, like rock and roll star, like things like that. that that's like my dream is like, uh, I have like dream concepts, I'd say, as opposed to dream. Con I feel like I've, this sounds bad, but I've like worked with a lot of my dream clients and they're still my dream clients. <laughs> All that's my clients amazing. are my dream clients just because like, I, I enjoy what I do. So it's like any, like everyone that I work with is it's, it's a dream to like, just do this at all so yeah that's, that's how I'll, I'll, I'll answer that but I, I i wouldn't say like i want to work for nike or uh like i'd love to work on nike stuff but <laughs> i think i i think of more of like less about the client and more like what's the idea that's always how i 
I, I think really, and sorry to deflect that and like give no. the wrong answer, but <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's just, that's, that's just how I am. Like, I, I, I wish I could just be like, Oh, I wish it, I could work on, uh, I don't know, some huge fashion brand. I don't, it doesn't really matter to me. I'd rather do some, like, if it's a cool idea, like I'd rather just do that. Yeah. Yeah. Creativity speaks more to the soul than, than getting yeah. a huge payday from, from some corporate job that, you know, you, you, yeah. you don't enjoy. So, yeah. And that's sustainable too. Cause it's like, like I can have a great concept with a, with a small client, like, and I, I'm just as fulfilled as if I was in some crazy studio working on Dior or something. Like what did I just do recently? I was with iron and resin and we were shooting this dude, Hayden Roberts, who builds these beautiful triumphs. And we we're just riding around in Santa Paula, California, this little farm town with these, his old tri like, that's so cool to me. Like that was like, that makes me like, so more, so like, just as excited as if I was like with the creative director of Levi Strauss or some like, and we were in a studio shooting like some celebrity or I don't know, like it's i uh, I'm just more, I just think about concepts more than names and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, I honestly see that. And I think it breathes through your work. Just the, the, oh, thanks. the, the striving for uh, something masterful i guess but but in your own environment it's just yeah i don't know yeah yeah there's something about that that i can just see when yeah. looking at your work yeah hmm. so where would you like to I, I don't know maybe this is just another loaded question but where would you like to see yourself in the next four to five years um is there that's good too um a different level of photography you'd like to 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 be at or or just strictly doing yeah, I've been doing some more commercial stuff lately. I mean, I've been on like a lot of like commercial bids and where there's uh, like a, a bigger team involved, I I kind of like having like a whole crew behind you. I was just working on something recently and we, we had, there was like all these people and it was, it just felt like a, like a team and it was fun. So I think doing some of the more, and not just because they're big and like awesome, but just collaborating with different people, I think is fun. And so like the next, like, in the in the future, I'll I'll probably be doing more stuff with that, or we're we're doing bigger like commercial stuff. Also, like directing, like I I don't uh, I don't shoot like I'm not a DP or anything, but like directing commercials would be fun. In the next five years, like if if like bouncing in, into that, because um, I'm just around it so much, and I I love thinking that way. So I think like directing would be something that I'll start getting more into. But yeah, I think just collaborating more with people. Yeah, and and coming up with with concepts and and making them happen, I think is is where it's going. Less less like like this stuff all the time, and more like uh like high level, yeah, co like concepts and hire, yeah. hiring people to to do it. I think yeah, that's that's where it's sort of going. But mm -hmm. we'll see. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's <laughs> I think that's really cool. Yeah, so, I just kind of go where, where like I like, and sometimes I'll, I'll go a certain direction and be like, ah, I don't really like that so much. So I'll, I'll, you just never know. You just kind of like go through this thing and see see where it takes you. So I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to do another, another one in four years and we'll see where we're at. <laughs> I, I would love that. I think with, with you too. <laughs> <laughs> I will. We'll I'll follow you up with you. I'll, in another I'll three, interview you that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see where I'm at in four years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah I. Uh... I, I think that there's, you know, so much value that you've brought within this conversation. And um, I, I know that a lot of people that follow me on social media were really excited about this conversation um, to, to hear from you and to hear your thoughts, because I know that especially within the, the people that follow me, we have uh, a bit of an overlap uh, in kind of like what we shoot. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of people that that follow you as well and uh, find so much inspiration as well as I find inspiration. So uh, this conversation oh, thanks, was man. like, very uh yeah very huge for me and uh just gives me a lot of uh a lot of insight for myself but as well for for other people that are desiring to to grow their photography you know i i just speaking back to some of the points and summarizing a little bit um you know just just not focusing so much on what other people think but just realizing that you know you're in a creative journey just keep putting in the work keep putting in the reps and you'll get to where you need to be and I think that you had so many good points that a lot of people, if they just listened to this and then went out and did it, we just find so much value, you know, just, just leaving the noise of social media and then mm -hmm. putting your head down, 
seeing where you need to go and, and just fixing your sights on that and, and being very meticulous about what you do. Um, I, 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 you can't, you can't lose. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I think you nailed it there. I think that's like really the only way just to just spend time doing it and enjoy it too. And then embrace learning and wherever you're at, like I'm at a certain, I'm still learning every day. You know, the goal is to just never stop. It's just to, to always keep learning. So um, you, you'll never get there. <laughs> so don't think that's a place where you can be like, you just, you keep going. And if you just enjoy the journey, you just, you'll keep growing and don't think of like some place that you're trying to get to. If you just focus on what you're doing, I think that's a good strategy. Okay. Thank you so much for giving of your time today to uh, benefit Absolutely. the photography community. I, I think this is going to be fantastic for them. So thank yeah, you. thanks man. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you having me on. So now if you like this style of conversation or podcast, I'm going to be doing many more interviewing many different styles of photographers as well as content creators. And I know that my goal is definitely to give you guys as much value as possible. So if this appeals to you, feel free to subscribe and like catch you guys soon.